Good morning friends. Welcome back to Panika Tutorials. In this video, I want to discuss one more numerical question on first come first serve scheduling algorithm. These kind of questions will help you to understand the concept in a better way. So I request everyone to watch the complete video for better understanding. First let me read out the question, then I will discuss the solution with you. Look at the question. Three process P1, P2, P3 with execution time as 20 units, 30 units, 10 units respectively. Each process uses first 20% of execution time in CPU, then 50% time in I.O., then 30% in CPU. Find the average waiting time using first come first serve scheduling algorithm. If you look at the question carefully, each process will have the CPU burst time and also the I.O. burst time. Is it clear? Now they have three process. Let me draw the table first. We will have a process such as P1, P1, P2, P3. Their arrival time have not mentioned. If they does not mention the arrival time, you can consider it as zero. Okay, all the process has arrived at zero units of time and the order of arrival is P1, then P2, then P3. Okay, execution time is 20 units, 30 units and then 10 units is clear. Then CPU burst time, let me keep it as CPU burst time, then IO burst time, then again CPU burst time. Okay, is it clear? Let me draw the lines to differentiate. Is it clear? Now what they are saying first 20%, 20 percent, 20 percent of 20 is 4. Okay. Is it clear? Then 50 percent of 20 is 10. Then 30 percent of 20 is 6. So you can compute it. 10 plus 4 is 14. 14 plus 6 is 20, correct. Okay, then 20% in the CPU, which will be 6, okay. 50% will be 15, 30% will be 9. Is it clear? Again, you can compute. 6 plus 15 is 21, 21 plus 9 is 30. Now, 20% of 10 will be 2, 50% of 10 will be 5, 30% of 10 is 3. So 2 plus 5 is 7, 7 plus 3 is 10, okay. So now we already discussed about the process state diagram. We will have 7 states such as new, ready, running, okay, terminated, wait, suspended wait and suspended ready. Now to explain this concept, I need to take the ready state, running state, wait or blocked. Okay, now whenever the process is ready to execute, it will come to the ready state. Now, if you have multiple process such as let's take the P1, P2, P3 is there. Okay, now among these three process, which process will be scheduled to the running state? If you have only one CPU or one processor, then only one process can be there in the running state at a time. So if you have three process which are there in the ready state, which process has to be scheduled or dispatched will depend on the scheduling algorithm. As it is first come first serve scheduling algorithm, we will look at the arrival time. Arrival time of process P1, arrival time of process P2, arrival time of process P3. Which one has arrived first? Let's consider that process P1 has arrived first. Then process P1 will be scheduled to the running state. Okay. Then if it needs only burst time of the CPU, then it will be given entire time. Suppose let's take that it needs 10 units of CPU time to complete its task. As the first come first serve scheduling algorithm is a non pre to scheduling algorithm, it will run for 10 units of time. Once it complete its task, it will go to the terminated state. Is it clear? But here what they are saying, 4 units of the CPU time will be required. So first 4 units it will run in the running state then it needs 10 units of IO time so once any process needs the IO request then it will be sent to the waiting state such a way that 
CPU can run the another process. Is it clear? Once the IO request is completed, the process will go back from the wait state to the ready state. Is it clear? Are you able to understand? Now with this explanation, let me solve this question for you. Okay. Now let me draw the Gantt chart. Okay. If we can draw the Gantt chart properly, then half of our question is completed. Okay. Always the Gantt chart will start from zero units of time. Okay. At zero units of time, process P1, process P2, process P3 are there in the ready state. Now, which process has arrived first P1? The order of arrival is P1, P2, P3. Okay. Now, if process P1 arrived to the ready state first, as it is a first come first of scheduling algorithm, process P1 will be dispatched to the running state. Okay. Now, process P1 needs 4 units of CPU time. So, it will be given 4 units of CPU time. Okay. Then at 4 units of time, it will be sent to the wait state because it needs 10 units of time. Okay. So, if it sends for the 10 units of time to the wait state at 4 units of time. So, it needs 10 units of IO device. So, when it will be released from the wait state to the ready state at 14 units of time, it will come back to the ready state. Are you able to understand? Listen carefully. At 4 units of time, the process P1 has been suspended from running state to the wait state. At the wait state, it needs 10 units of time. So, 4 plus 10 at 14 units of time, the process P1 will again come to the ready state. That information we have to keep. Okay. Now, process P1 is here. Process P2 and process P3 are there in the ready state. Now, which one came first? Process P2. Now, process P2 will be sent to the running state. Okay. Now, how many units of CPU time it requires? 6 units. So, at 10 units of time, process P2 will be sent to the waiting state. And not waiting state, wait state or suspend state. And it needs 15 units of IO time. So, as it entered at 10 units, it needs 15 units. Process P2 will come back to the ready state at 25 units of time. Is it clear? Are you able to understand? Now, process P1 and P2 are there in the wait state. Process P3 is there in the ready state. Okay. So, only one process is there. That process will be sent to the running state. Okay. And it needs only two units of time. So, process P3, okay, are you able to understand? We'll run for two units of time. At 12 units of time, process P3 will be sent to the wait state and it needs 5 units of time. So, 12 plus 5 will be 17. At 17 units of time, process P3 will be sent to the ready state. Now, at 12 units of time, any process is available in the ready state? No process is available in the ready state. All the three processes are there in the wait state only. So, CPU is idle till 14 units of time. At 14 units of time, process P1 will come to the ready state. Are you able to understand it or not? Okay. Now, process P1, if it comes to the ready state, it as it is alone there, it will be scheduled to the running state. And it needs 6 units of CPU time. So, process P1 will be given for 6 units of CPU time. At 20 units of time, it will complete its task and will go to the terminated state. Now, look at here. By that time, at 17 units of time, process P3 will come to the ready state. Okay. As it is a non-preempt to scheduling algorithm, even process P3 is there in the ready state at 17 units of time. Process P1 has completed its task up to 20 units of time. Okay. Now, process P3 will go to the running state. It needs CPU for 3 units of time. At 23 units of time, it will complete its task and will go to the terminated state. Now, process P2 will come at 25 units of time. So, again, 2 more units of CPU time will be idle. 
is it clear so here two unit cpu is idle here two more unit cpu is idle okay at 25 units of time process p2 will come to the ready state and will send to the running state is it clear now process p2 needs 9 units of cpu time at 34 units of time cpu will complete its task oh, sorry process p2 will complete its task so all the three processes have completed the task at 34 units of time okay now with this information we will compute the completion time of each process because if you want to compute the waiting time we need to compute the turn around time of each process so for computing the turn around time we need to compute the completion time so completion time is process p2 is 34 process p1 is 20 process p3 is 23 so now we need to compute the turn around time turn around time of a process is equal to completion time minus arrival time 20 minus 0 is 20 34 minus 0 is 34 23 minus 0 is 23 okay now we need to compute the waiting time waiting time is equal to turn around time minus cpu burst time all name is it clear cpu burst time all name so turn around time is 20 for the process p1 and CPU burst time is 4 plus 6. This is I/O burst time. This we should not consider when we are computing the waiting time. So 4 plus 6 is 10. So 20 minus 10 is 10. Process P2 is 34 minus 6 plus 9 is 15, which is equal to 19. And process P3 is 23 minus 2 plus 3 is 5. So 18. So we got the waiting time of each process. They have asked us to compute the average waiting time. So average waiting time is equal to sum of waiting time of all the process by number of process, which is equal to 10 plus 19 plus 18 by 3, which is equal to 29 plus 37 47 by 3 are you able to understand it or not 3 15 is a 45 yes correct okay and you will have 2 by 3 which is equal to 6 0.66 so you will get approximately 15.66 is the average waiting time to complete all these three process using the first come first serve scheduling algorithm i hope it is clear for you if you still have any doubts related to this concept or related to this question, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I will try to clear your doubts as early as possible. Thank you for watching the complete video. Have a nice day.